My name is Olo Tudor Force and I'm a multidisciplinary artist based at August House. Yeah, I've been here since 20, 2017, so it's about six years going on seven. Um, what brought me here was a curatorial residency. It was hosted by August House in collaboration with Teresa Lizamo. So, yeah, I think the basis of the residency was to curate um, an exhibition of the artists within um, the building. So at the time it was about 45 artists. So I think it was a, yeah, quite a big show. Being at August House, it influenced my artistic approach in many ways. Um, I think being around this many artists or being around this many professional artists was what inspired me to fully practice art because I was curating a lot um, when I came here. So I think being around so many artists, it, it like really pushed me into committing um, to creating works, but also it it sort of paved my way in terms of the mediums that I do because you're surrounded by so many artists and all of, most of them do like similar things because we're in the hub of art, you know, like when you're in Joburg. Um, so so by, by observing naturally also it allowed me to explore and experiment so that I could find a style that is unique to me. Um, that is a representation of my voice and my identity in a way. So I majored in, in sculpture and class blowing. at TUT, it's on a University of Technology. I know I draw a lot right now. <laughs> Um, but believe it or not, I actually never used to like drawing. Like I hate, I loathed it. <laughs> I think I was, um, I was privileged to go to schools like from, from preschool actually, yes. Preschool, primary, high school, I was privileged to go to schools that had like art as a curriculum. So obviously because of the limitations of like materials and equipment, what you were doing was always limited to drawing, printmaking, and painting. So when I got to varsity, I just wanted to do something different, you know, something I was not like exposed to. And I think that's how I also landed up on sculpture and glass blowing because it was so fascinating. These machineries, these strange materials, you know, or common materials, but strange ways of making art. humanity I mean like the way we treat each other the respecting each other loving each other um, so I just investigate and unpack human experiences and human interactions through my work what I studied in school for well, in varsity like the sculpture and glass blowing um, especially in class you know you, we work with like a lot of copper and shin stock which is made from copper because it's the one material that can withstand the heat of glass because glass burns at like a thousand two hundred degrees so it can withstand the heat of glass without like burning away or like changing color or anything um so we used to do like a lot of patterns and emboss it or fuse it like between glass um, also just wiring and sculpture when you're doing like armatures, like internal armatures or support structures. Um, so when I, when I started drawing, uh, I used, no, I'm lying. At first it was about what was accessible to me. I think that's how I also ventured into steel wools. So 
it was about the materials accessible to me and then it was also about um yes i'm doing a drawing but how can i bring that sculptural element to drawing because that's what i loved doing you know i didn't want it to just be a drawing so i was like how can i make this drawing sculptural and i started with i still had like a lot of copper wires from my varsity days and i'm like experimenting with that and I was trying to depict the flow and movement of material with the copper and I was stapling that to the board. And eventually I wondered what would happen if I were just to use the staples, you know. So also, the more you work, the, the more ideas come to you about how you can push the mediums um, further and like big, big break boundaries with what you're doing. Mm. My best moment is when I finished creating an artwork that I've been excited about and it came out the way I had envisioned or better. <laughs> you know, because sometimes what you envision doesn't really <laughs> work out when you're like really doing um, the artwork so there's a there's there's, a, there's an excitement when you just done um, sometimes even when you in the process of making the work and it's just working out you know or you think of things that can um, make it more aesthetically pleasing that just come to you in the moment when the artwork sells as well you know because I make the work for the people so i appreciate it when people buy. only when they buy but also when they connect to the work you know when someone buys the work because they were in awe of the work or in awe of whatever message the work was portraying so that connection from from the viewer to the artwork i find it really beautiful so i think that is a great moment for me um, a best moment that is continuous is just being able to make a living from art, you know, to be, to be able, I feel like it's a privilege to be able to make a living from something that you love doing.